That was a very, very kind introduction, um, which I, is a, especially uh, surprising considering uh, Doug and I don't care for each other. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Doug. I almost feel a little guilty saying this, but I, I've, I've come up with it, so I'm going to offer it up. We have uh, many movers and shakers in the economy here and many guests. If you need a, any evidence as to the strength of the Saskatchewan economy, even Doug Hemsley is successful right now. <laughs> He's making some money. So, that, so that's pretty good. Doug was there at the very beginning of our government. He helped out, uh, took some time off and sacrificed, uh, frankly, uh, business opportunities to serve uh, and transition for us at a time when we uh, had a lot more questions and answers. We, we still do, frankly, but we really had, the, the imbalance was much greater then, I'll say. And uh, Doug's been a friend for a very long time and provided a, a just excellent advice to, to us that serves us still today. We have many key people on our team because of, uh, of you, Doug, and I just want to uh, thank you very, very much for your friendship and for your help early on in our, uh, in our government. Uh, welcome, Conference Board Canada, to uh, our capital city, the great city of Regina. We're very pleased that you're uh, hosting the conference here. Hopeful, uh, as Michael has indicated, that there'll be others to follow in Saskatoon and perhaps back, back in Regina. You are here at uh, a fantastic time in the life of our province. It's springtime. It's a beautiful spring day. There is a $7 billion mega project unfolding uh, called Spring Seating uh, that's happening acro across the province. I'm not sure if it's a coincidence, but the news on the front page of the paper today says we are leading the country in terms of fertility rates. <laughs> yes, John, the CEO of the Regina Chamber, John Hopkins, is applauding that. It's good to own the, your, the power company if you're the government, because when you do, you can plan the power outages and you see attendant population uh, growth. So we're we're grateful for some of the uh, some of these developments here uh, here lately. I have some comments that I'd like to make a little bit about where we've been in the province in terms of our recent history and where we hope to go uh, in the future. Uh, and maybe if we have time for a few questions. But just before I do, uh, I, I, I want to comment a little bit about where we are. Uh, I, I think in the country, and I, I've got some concerns uh, going forward. I think many of us do about. Uh, the midterm and the long-term future of the country from a, the perspective of national unity. But let's talk about the economy for a second. If we get our national and provincial economic policies right in the next little while, I like Canada's chances to succeed in a world where the fastest growing economies in that world desire two things, not only two things, but principally food security and energy security. In that world, I like Canada's chances. And I especially like Saskatchewan's chances. We need then to focus on the fundamentals as a country and as a province, the fundamentals for a solid growth plan, for solid economics. Fiscal probity is one of them. I'll get into some of them, some more of them in a moment. We also need to avoid perhaps the temptation of pursuing policies in the country that would be harmful to those two particular areas of attendant strength in Canada. And we've had that debate a little bit. I'm not going to get into it here today, but we've obviously been having that debate in the country between various uh, political interests. I want to tell you it is a very, very serious discussion for me, for the province of Saskatchewan, uh, and I believe for the country. It's, it's my opinion that this is a key debate we're going to have. We're, in the next number of years, we're going to make some important decisions at the provincial level in various provinces and then coming uh, nationally as well. Uh, and. Uh, all the opportunity that exists for Canada, I think, hangs in the balance of making uh, those, uh, those correct decisions. I want to provide a bit of perspective of where Saskatchewan's been just in the last little while uh, and uh, where we were not too long ago to maybe provide a bit of a context for the future. There was a headline 10 years ago in the Leader Post that said, province's population plummets, Saskatchewan has fewest numbers of people since 1981. It was a story of, uh, of the census, which showed that there were just under 979,000 people living here at the time, 11,000 fewer than the census before. The story quotes a Regina man who had moved to Calgary to open up a business, and he had gone there because he thought there was, quote, a lot of young money in Calgary. And so there was. The story also quotes a statistician who cautioned against making too much of another population drop. 
in his view, and by the way, in the view of some in leadership at the time, Saskatchewan's population had always hovered around the one million mark. The implication, of course, being that it always would, that this was a part of our reality, that this was really a part of the Saskatchewan story. Five years later, more bad news. Before the 2007 election, just a few months before then, there was a headline in the Saskatoon Star Phoenix. After another census report, the editorial headline read, Census Reveals Costs of Ignoring Economic Advice. The census uh, demonstrated that the population had dropped again in the intervening period by more than 10,000 people. The Star Phoenix warned that the province had a short window of opportunity to deal with this, to implement policies that might provide some, uh, some redress to this challenge. And it asked, actually, ironically enough, if it, in reading that, that editorial is interesting, because it asked, a, it asked a question about what would we all be saying in the province of Saskatchewan after the next census? What would be the result of it? And then how would we respond uh, as, a, uh, as a province and as an economy? Today, just five years later, it's not very long in the life of an economy or in a province, but just five years later, those headlines seem unreal today. In the last five years, we've seen the most sustained growth in our population since the early days of our history. We've added 70,000 people in five years. And you know, I think we're kind of getting immune to this stuff, these stats that roll in. 70,000 new people in the last five years. That's twice the, sub well, we added, we added roughly uh, the equivalent of two moose jaws during 23 quarters of steady growth. Our population now is 1,067,612 people. And the recent headline in the Leader Post was a little bit different. Saskatchewan is a comeback story. Census confirms growth. It is a stunning turnaround. There's no question about it. Driven by commodity prices driven by factors outside the control of government. You will, you will never hear our government say, boy, because we got elected in 07, look at how everything's so much better economically. We know that there are external factors at play here. We understand that. We also believe that government can get in the way of growth, that government can put up barriers to growth. And so if we've had an impact, hopefully it's been to remove some of them, whether they were regulatory or legislative or taxes. Hopefully we've helped by telling the story as aggressively as we possibly could, and more on that in a moment. But we understand there are external factors at play, and our job is to try to sustain it in whatever way we can, principally by not... Uh, getting in the way of much of what's going on in Saskatchewan. We're no longer, though, the sleepy backwater that some viewed us to be, a perennial have-not province. Increasingly, the young money is in Regina and in Saskatoon and in rural Saskatchewan, in the resource sector across the province and in the north. I remember going to a Calgary frequently to do policy development work. We'd meet with CAP or the service sector, and uh, Doug was helping uh, voluntarily at some of that time. Too. I remember flying there, and, 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 and even in the airport in Calgary, you sensed it was palpable. You sensed the energy in that city, the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial energy that was there. And I think we longed for that to be here, recognizing that there was all this resource potential. This huge potential in the world that wants energy and food security for our province, and we knew that you know the power of that energy. Uh, and you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's here now. It hits you in, the, in this airport, in our capital city. It hits you in Saskatoon. And I need to say thank you to many of the people in this room, the leaders in this room, who have helped create an attitudinal, attitudinal shift, which is, of course, crucial in the transformation. Uh, of our province. There are other stats we could go over. We have the lowest unemployment in the country. There are the record uh, number of people that are working today. Weekly earnings, by the way, are uh, at historic highs, which is a great sign that our employers are making sure they're working hard to compete for their employees for labor. We've seen those weekly earning numbers climb and climb in the last four years, five years. This year, we expect to see investment exceed $20 billion, about double the amount recorded in 2006. And of course, we've seen a surge in immigration. From 201 to 206, we did about 8,000 people in the nominee program. We'll do 10,000 this year alone. And by the way, there, there is an example of where governments can make a few changes. Uh, Minister, former Minister Norris on the immigration file carved out a dynamic relationship with the federal government. We set bold goals in government and we're seeing now the result of those goals with immigration at 
historic levels to the province of Saskatchewan. Consider the comments of Shazia Ramon, who moved here from England when her husband, a doctor, got a job in Regina. She said, and I quote, to be honest, I can't imagine living anywhere else now. This is home and has everything I want. I'm guessing that the interview didn't take place in January. <laughs> That's our dry, cold season. <laughs> By the way, I've been here all my life, uh, except for about nine months in Ottawa. I, I have no idea what dry, cold means. <laughs> when you can't feel your extremities, is it, does it matter if it's dry or wet? <laughs> but it's something we, we say. We welcome Shazia Ramon and others who have come to this province to seek a better life. We have welcomed the growing interest and numbers of our First Nations citizens and institutions that are fully, more fully engaged in our economy every day with much more work to be done. We see the success at the Saskatchewan Indian Institute of Technology. We see the increase in Aboriginal employment uh, in this province. The last stat, uh, stats that were out in terms of jobs showed us creating 13,000 jobs in the province year over year. Uh, fully a quarter of them were uh, for Aboriginal people in our province. And we know how important continued progress is on that front. We acknowledge the contribution of everybody in this province to a change in its attitude to the building of a new economy. And you know, I think if we made a mistake in government, and we, we, we made more than one, but one of them perhaps, not just in government, but for all of us, was to underestimate the breakneck pace of growth to underestimate its impact in terms of issues like housing and infrastructure. This is where we need to do better. This is where we will do better. Uh, last week, I, I shuffled the, the cabinet of Saskatchewan. Um, dental surgery and cabinet shuffles would rank pretty close in terms of things that I enjoy <laughs> just because of the great group of people, women and men we have on our team and uh, it's an occasion where some new ones come in, and that's a happy occasion. But it's an occasion for some to make room for others to build capacity and uh, bend strength. And, and they have worked so hard. I know how hard they've worked on behalf of this province and worked effectively. And so it's not, a, it's not a, always a lot of, uh, of fun. But it's essential, especially if we want to reconstruct the government of Saskatchewan to match a long-term plan. And we do especially if we want to make sure that government in this province is structured in a way that it is, uh, it is focused on growth and, importantly, focused to a greater extent on meeting the challenges of growth and then dealing with the dividends of those growth and how we invest it in our quality of life so we can find that virtuous circle. In Saskatchewan, we used to have that vicious cycle where the, the atrophied economy would result in people leaving for opportunities elsewhere, which would further decrease the tax base, and it was a vicious cycle. What we're into right now, not because of the government, but what we're into right now is a much more virtuous cycle, where an expanding tax base allows us to invest in quality of life, pay down debt, reduce taxes, attract more people, and that's the circle we want to keep going. That's the point of a long-term plan that we need for the province. There are two notable changes among many that I'll highlight today from the shuffle, from the restructure. One is a new Ministry of the Economy, a very large ministry that includes the former energy and resources file. It includes tourism, it includes trade, it includes enterprise Saskatchewan, it includes employment and immigration under one file. Two ministers working on that, led by uh, Bill Boyd, a veteran uh, minister and member of the Legislative Assembly, and assisted by Tim McMillan, an up-and-comer who is going to be the minister responsible for energy res and resources and tourism, and work with Bill on that file. His job, their job, is to make sure there continues to be a clear path for people to invest here and to build here and to remove barriers to growth in the economy. Bill has a seat, now has a big file under him, and uh, it's been said that Bill has so much power that he's just, quote, one fluffy Persian cat and a remote desert island away from being the political equivalent of a James Bond villain. <laughs> Actually, that was Murray Mandrick. It's, pretty, it's a pretty good quote. Uh, and on, beh on behalf of Bill, I'm, I'm offended because um, Bill doesn't really actually like pets. <laughs> that part's true. But Murray might be onto something. We want Bill and Tim to be Dr. No when it comes to the policies that we know will not work. When it comes to, um, say, for example, uh, uh, picking winners and losers in the economy uh, or nuancing too much economic development policy such that it becomes a barrier to growth uh, itself. 
Uh, Don McMorris, our, the only health minister we've ever had, is moving over to an important file dealing with infrastructure, pioneering the new Saskatchewan Builds Initiative, where we want to make better use of P3s and do a better job of long-term planning in terms of highways and infrastructure uh, right across uh, the province. And I, and I hope these two changes demonstrate what we're seeking to do as we work towards the new plan we want to unveil in the fall. We've asked our MLAs to head out this summer. We've asked our ministers to talk to stakeholders to get their ideas on developing the mid and the long-term plan for Saskatchewan, that the momentum would continue and that we would be ready for the challenges of growth. The plan will be a blueprint for sustaining that economic growth and importantly for maintaining our quality of life. And we'll be, it'll build on a paper I released as opposition leader in 2004 called The Promise of Saskatchewan. I won't scoop ourselves about what's in that plan. We're, we, we, we're not prejudging it. We're going to be listening and developing it together with people like you. However, I'll tell you, there are some things that are not subject to change and non-negotiable that will be uh, underscoring this particular plan. Fiscal probity. Fiscal responsibility will be at the heart of this long-term plan going forward. Saskatchewan today is the only jurisdiction in the country with a balanced budget. We think that's part of the Saskatchewan advantage. We made difficult decisions to get to that point, even as the economy was strong, but it's a very important claim to be able to make, I think, and building block for the economy of our province. In a world where massive debts and the unraveling of the entitlement society have people in the streets, a balanced budget may not be the stuff of poetry. A speech on a balanced budget might not fill the mall in Washington or bring tears to anyone's eyes. Well, maybe some economists and accountants. <laughs> but the seeds of economic dysfunction and a destabilized globe is, in our view, fiscal irresponsibility. Deficits and the intendant entitlement, especially long-term structural deficits, and the attendant entitlement that is engendered is a threat to our economy going forward. And, and back to that piece from the start, I think that's a, a threat to the, to the unity of our country. Fiscal probity, actually, is the only way to assure the long-term high quality of life we want for the province. The only way that we can commit to, to the people of this province that we're not going to have to gut programs that are important to them or, or see a, a, a lack of, of, of funds for health care is if we ensure that we're paying the bills and reducing the debt today and being responsible. So that's going to be pretty key uh, part of our plan uh, going forward. Uh, another principle will be competitive taxes and regulatory uh, environment. We've worked hard on this front. We've reduced taxes for all, for small business, for producers, for, for families. A family of four now earns more here before they have to give anything to their provincial government in taxes than anywhere else in the Dominion of Canada. But we know that our income tax rates are too tiered and too high. And we know on the corporate rate, next door Alberta is 10 and we're not there yet. We're going to have to get there within the context of a balanced budget. If you're beside Walmart, you better be prepared to compete with Walmart. It means for us stable royalties in the province. That's got to be a part of the Saskatchewan Advantage brand, and it will be. It means sensible labor legislation that's fair to both sides, but competitive with other places with whom we must compete. It means environmental regulations that do serve a strict purpose without putting up needless barriers to growth. And it means providing the proper incentives to build the economy of tomorrow, not picking winners and losers, but making sure we've got the right infrastructure in place. For example, you know, projects like the Global Transportation Hub that can attract businesses literally from all over the world if we get our part right. A third principle will be innovation uh, in the plan going forward. We want our innovation agenda, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, to be built on our current resource strength. We're not going to try to reconstruct Silicon Valley North in Saskatchewan. But we have a 300-year supply of coal. So I think we're going to continue to lead in terms of clean coal technology, carbon capture and sequestration. We have amazing strength in this regard in our electrical utility and at the University of Regina. We need to build more on that opportunity. We have the what will be the largest uh, demonstration project coming in on, on time and on budget, Robert? Yes. yes. And a smaller one with new uh, partners in Hitachi, I think, that are going to get the attention of the world, a world, by the way, that's still building coal plants. Notwithstanding the debate that's happening, China's still building coal plants. And so is India, and the United States is 
50 percent reliant on coal as well. We produce 30 percent of the world's uranium. And you've heard me say in the past, the next ounce of yellow cake, we add any value to it all, we'll be the first. Unbelievable, but true. We've invested $30 million with the University of Saskatchewan to, uh, to construct, to build the new nuclear research center. Uh, and we have attracted partners in our interest in pioneering small reactor technology, again, with Hitachi. We're going to continue to support the Petroleum Technology Research Center at the University of Regina as part of our growth agenda. And as Canada's largest agricultural player, we intend to lead in terms of research and development. We've made some recent announcement, announcements that have been referenced around wheat. Uh, and I'm looking forward to a, a meeting later today with Bayer Crop Science on their continued and welcomed engagement on this front. We will build a global food security institute at the University of Saskatchewan uh, with our partners at the University of Saskatchewan and with industry that's going to put significant dollars there and we will make a significant investment in this. It's in Bangladesh on a trade mission and I think Bangladesh in terms of their imports of uh, lentils which are a staple there, 90 percent of, of them come from about 18,000 Saskatchewan farmers. It's quite a thing to go to the to, to be in the hotel compound and do these have these meetings with officials. It's more compelling to get out of the compound and see what's happening on see what's happening in those in, in the cities there and on the streets. In terms of hunger, we have great customers for our fertilizer and for agricultural products. We have to do better by a world that's increasingly hunger. Yes, there's economics in it for us. There are opportunities in it for us. But there's also an obligation for us. And that's also part of our vision moving forward. Finally, a principle of our plan will be engagement. Where we've been the tree that uh, sort of fell in the forest for a long time. Uh, notwithstanding all of our natural resource uh, uh, blessings we have and the potential we have, we've worked hard as a government, though imperfectly, to better tell our story to the rest of the country and around the world. We're going to continue to do that in terms of trade missions, in terms of recruitment missions. We were recently in Ireland uh, and had a very successful time there. John's here from the chamber was a big help on that particular uh, trade mission. Uh, last month, government representatives, uh, representatives accompanied 26 employers attending a national job fair at Toronto. Bill Boyd was recently in China and Australia. I was in London. He went over to Japan on an energy and mineral investment mission. Uh, we've had ministers uh, move across the world. Uh, when Lyle Stewart was the enterprise minister, spent some time in Turkey, another very, very important customer in that part of the world for us. But again, as Lionel will tell us from the Saskatchewan Trade Export Partnership, you can't do these drive-by trade missions. The, we need to be stewards of these relationships more than we have in the past, and that will be essential to our plan as well. In terms of uh, uh, some concluding thoughts, I just want to share with you what would motivate us to continue with this growth plan as elected people, as a relatively newly elected government. I hate to disappoint you at the conference board, Michael, but it's not pie charts and it's not great reports we might get for GDP forecasts. Those are pretty neat. But our inspiration to continue is about the quality of life we want for the province. Here's what enterprise oriented or growth oriented or uh, politicians or governments do too little of. We don't finish enough sentences. We don't finish the sentence, we want growth in Saskatchewan because. We kind of think everyone understands why we would want growth. Maybe that's the reason I don't know. We're going to finish that sentence in Saskatchewan. We want growth because I want to be at more announcements like I was today at the legislature when we announced historic increase in income for those who are disabled among us, for the intellectually disabled, for others who have disabilities. For a too long, they've been on a, a social assistance, a Saskatchewan assistance plan. It's basically welfare. They asked two things from us. They said, could you give us an income program instead? We'd like the dignity of that, for example. And then when you can afford it, government, this was years ago, we think it should be increased. Because here's what's happening in the other parts of the country, and here's what's happening in, in this province with all of its wealth. And so in the election campaign, our most expensive campaign promise was actually on this issue. And today we kept it. So incomes for those who have intellectual disabilities and others who are disabled who are living independently will be up to $270 per month. 
And for others living in residences, it'll go up 40 or $50. That's why we want growth. The only way to sustain that, the only way, by the way, on the fiscal side to keep reducing the debt and keep taxes low is growth. That's the end of the sentence. And that's what we're determined to succeed at here in the province, not just the government, uh, but all of you. There was a lady named Gail who was at the announcement today, and she sent me an email after we had originally made the campaign commitment. She said this, quote, Sir, I literally jumped out of my chair and gave my service dog, Angel, a bit of a hug when I heard it. You have no idea how much this will mean for me. I've been on the Saskatchewan Assistance Plan for well over 10 years and barely get $500 a month to live on. This will change my life. Another lady told the minister that she was, when she gets her check, and they're in the mail, by the way, and I know when, when government says that, people, but, but they are. I found out today they're in process and in the mail, thanks to our great ministry staff and social services. One another lady said, when I get my check, I'm going to McDonald's, because I haven't eaten out in five years. That's why we want growth. We want to reduce wait times for surgery. We want to make education, post-secondary education affordable and accessible. We want to invest in people, and we want the virtuous circle. We want to keep fiscal probity front and center, competitive taxes, infrastructure investments, so that you can continue doing what you're doing, which is growing this amazing economy in the province of Saskatchewan. So I want to thank you all for being here, and I want to encourage all of you to help us uh, finish the sentence. Have a great day.